Hi, I'm here again with Gary Sikic on my show. Gary is the president of Logical Management Systems, a business consulting and risk advisory firm. Gary, thanks for being on the show again. Thanks for having me back, Lee. So today we're going to talk about the current state of global cyber insecurity. News events have been published detailing Iran's potential cyber response. The energy sector has been put on notice to be looking out for attacks, as well as corporate America. So, uh, Gary, what is the current state of cyber risk as you see it? I think it, it's kind of appropriate to begin to look at it as you introduced it, global insecurity. One has to begin to look at how secure are you, and in the context of how secure are you, how secure is our infrastructure, all the things we depend on for our day-to-day -day lives, mm -hmm. and, and how we how we live, literally. So everything from your food on the table, to the heat, to clean water, to your heat in your home, etc., all become and transportation, potentially and travel, an and fulfillment, road it, systems, everything that, that's out there. So we're going to be talking about the the highest areas of concern where a rogue terrorist organization might want to strike or a nation state that we're at odds with. And unfortunately, we have quite a few. Uh, later on in the second, third, and fourth segment, we'll be talking about detecting threats. Uh, in the third segment, we'll be talking about uh, protection against that, things that can be done proactively. And then finally, in the fourth and last segment, we'll be talking about responding to compromises, incident response, and how to recover and get back up online. Uh, so Gary, uh, can you give everyone an understanding of what um, encompasses uh, SCADA devices and what SCADA means? Yeah, SCADA systems were developed uh, for the use to control uh, operations in, in utilities and other, other areas. Uh, it's called the supervisory control and data acquisition. So, so what, what kind of devices make up SCADA devices? Everything from the control of pipelines, utility, electricity functions, uh, all the way on to healthcare uh, pacemakers and other types CPAP. of systems. But these are critical systems. These are, are systems that if someone wanted a cyber attack and really hurt us, they're yeah. the, the natural targets and, and they're classified as such because they have to be regulated and handled yeah. in a way to help keep them safe. Yeah, and the problem, the problem we face is not that these are, these are systems that are so vulnerable. The problem we face is that because of the technology that we've embraced over the years, since 1999, so that's what, almost 20 years now, or it is 20 years now, that those systems have become so embedded that we have gotten rid of the manual systems that they replaced. Mm -hmm. So things like switching for railroads, uh, you would be hard pressed to find manual switches available to the industry uh, because they got rid of them and they were scrapped and they're gone. Mm -hmm. uh, no one produces them, or I should say no one. They, they're produced in limited quantities uh, and they're hard to get. The, the things that we depend on in a lot of respects for the, the smooth running of our infrastructure become very critical to us because there are no alternatives for those systems. And as a result, we become more and more vulnerable to a infiltration of the systems yeah. for disruption. Uh, and, and then we also have what's known as FPGAs, Field Programmable uh, Gateway Arrays. They're you know, microprocessor controllers that can be programmed that can actually be altered by attacker to change mm -hmm. how these systems function, the mm -hmm. logic that works. Um, I mean, we can only think of what would happen, Gary, if um, a nation state that we're in a conflict with, what would happen if the water filtration system sensors were altered to put water out that appears safe but isn't? I think you, you see a lot of that today simply because the threat levels are such that we have to make sure these systems are so well protected. And unfortunately, the ability to protect the systems is not necessarily as 
good as it should be, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that they're bad, it's not that they're uh, behind the times, it's just that they're trying to keep up with things that are changing so rapidly. Technology disruptions and disruptive technologies today have mm -hmm. made a lot of systems sort of an antiquated before their time. And the problem is that to keep up with replacement, to keep up with oh. the, the viability systems becomes another burden to the system. Yeah. Another critical issue in this global insecurity aspect is look at the talent pool that's out there in the workforces. And you start to begin to realize that there are very few people mm -hmm. that are talented in the areas where we need them. Um, I think on our, our last segment that we did, I mentioned that in the energy industry, uh, nuclear engineers, uh, petrochemical engineers, desperately in needed uh, areas because their yeah. workforce is transitioning and the skills levels are not there. Yeah. Uh, so that becomes a real yeah. challenge. Yeah, just, just the past, um, in this month alone, cybersecurity firm Dragos issued a report showing that there's a number, I, I think around 11 groups that are actively targeting the energy sector mm -hmm. and trying to take out uh, various providers of energy, oil, gas, uh, you know, nuclear, there's, there's other threats there. Um, you know, locally here uh, in Chicago, you're in Indiana, we're in Illinois, what part of the energy sector do you think is at greatest risk? I think the, the interesting point with that is that the, the bigger players, Commonwealth Edison, NIPSCO, Northern Indiana Public Service, are doing their part to ensure that their infrastructure is well maintained and protected. The problem we run into is that they're not the only utility providers. If you look at, at across the United States, there are so many smaller utility providers, co-ops, small utility companies that don't necessarily have the uh, they don't resources have the scale. Yeah, and the, the, skills. And, and the problem that they encounter uh, and we encounter as a result is that they are critical links in the grid system. Um, so everything from water, gas, electric, mm -hmm. uh, telecommunications, etc., all dependent on a lot of these small players and getting one to go could potentially offer cascade effects to all, uh, all the others. And as it cascades, things can get even more disruptive. Yeah. So, um, so you can actually take down the big electrical utility by getting enough of the small vulnerable electrical co-ops mm -hmm. and launching a cyber attack on the electrical co-ops to then take yeah. out the, the big giant. Because yeah. you know, when these happens, you have power imbalance and Kershaw's law dictates the flow of electricity and it will flow where it's weak and the, the current flows, well, that can cause line tripping and power outages. Yeah, and, it, and I think the thing that people have to realize is that the apparently most vulnerable things are not necessarily the ones that, that are the most visible. And I say that in this respect. We look at power plants, we look at nuclear plants, and there's a fear of someone attacking the plant. In reality, it's the parts of the system that are not related or that are related linked to the power plant but not yeah. directly to interconnected system there. it's the everything from endpoint demand yep. to supply in in, yep. in our prior video we talked about manipulation of endpoint demand that could cause mm -hmm. a cyber attack yeah. so and it's the step up and step down systems when you generate yeah. it electricity stepped up it goes over transmission lines it goes to a point it's yeah. stepped down and then it goes in the the, the user yeah. groups the residential the the, the, your cities, yep. your, your smaller industries. So you start seeing these, these as being potentially vulnerable in a lot of respects. The thing in terms of vulnerability is that um, we have to begin to look at the users and begin to differentiate yep. which ones are what we call interruptible and which ones aren't. Yep. So in our next segment, we'll be de talk, talking about detection of these threats. And then finally, uh, after that, the third segment, we'll talk about protecting and how, what organizations should do, such as electrical co-ops, things they can do to get ahead of this. And then when things invariably do go wrong, uh, finally, we'll talk about incident response. So tune in next time, and please, we appreciate your shares, likes, sign up for my YouTube channel if you like this, and you'll get alerted when we publish the next one. Thank you.